Okay, so this is going to be a four-card oracle you pick uh, with Diet at Cross Finish. So there are going to be four cards. You pick what you want, yes, no, maybe, and then I'll do a Diet at Cross six-card finish at the end. Hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So look, just like I said, it couldn't be simpler. One, two, three, and four. Four cards laid out. You get to pick, you know, have a question in mind for each of those, and then uh, we'll reveal them, and we'll see uh, how that goes with what you're trying to decide. Then at the end, I'll do a diet across six card uh, divination of each individual one. Okay, so you can ask one, two, three, or four questions, and uh, here we go. You know, I just feel like now's a really good time to try to uh, meditate a little bit before you ask your question. Maybe pause the video, uh, take a minute to go get something to drink. Uh, just, uh, you know, nestle yourself into your seat and, uh, you know, give it a minute to kind of uh, to deflate a little bit and then recharge somewhat about what you want to ask the question. You know, just let's get ready. Let's all do the same thing. That's what I do. Okay, so the Uncommon Tarot. This is uh, the Uncommon Tarot is by Shaheen uh, Miro, uh, who's an intuitive energy worker and artist with commentary by uh, Teresa Reed, who is the, known as the Tarot Lady from a lot of blogs, the websites, and podcasts. And Uncommon is even defined here. You can just barely see it, but it says uh, not ordinary, remarkably exceptional, sort of as you would see in a dictionary. Uh, so here we go. It's a nice box. Uh, it's got that nice little clasp, which you don't often see on a smaller, and it's like you might expect a perfume to come in this box. It's that kind of quality. Okay, and the material is really has a nice sheen. So it's a beautiful piece of packaging. You know, at least you felt like, um, you know, you're getting a little something for this. The um, inside does have that definition on this foil, silver uh, foil uh, thing, uh, uncommon how to pronounce, ordinary, remarkable, uh, exceptional. And then the book is really a nice little booklet. It's uh, personalized by the artist. It's got some good information in here about him and the tarot lady, uh, Teresa Reed. And um, a little story about why he decided to make these tarot cards, and it goes really back to his youth. Um, his mother, in front of her children, she would lay out a few tarot cards on the table and ask what they saw, and the cards became kind of a moving uh, picture book uh, for the family. And you'll see what I mean uh, with his design of these cards. Okay, I'll just put this away and put it back in there. So, uh oh, I think I've got some cards backwards here. Looks like I do. Okay, so they are, uh, as you can see, silver foil gilded. Um, and then they've got a nice weight to them. They're not particularly heavy. They're just about right, actually. And just a typical dark, kind of mysterious back. The front of the cards, though, is beautiful. The images go from, you know, edge to edge. It's a nice, glossy, deep, uh, quality feeling card and with beautiful, rich colors. And uh, Shaheen's un Uncommon Tarot is a contemporary re-imaging of the Rider Waite Tarot uh, with a collage work uh, melange, uh, rich with worldly people, uh, places, and settings. I mean, you can see. So they're beautiful, beautiful cards. They're not hard to use because in the bottom it just tells you what that card is and then you get to take a minute and then pick out the elements in here that are pertinent to what you're uh, reading about. So a uh, beautiful card. This is always a good way to spread the cards out and get your energy into them or get them warmed up for the day or maybe you're working with somebody your friends are sitting around you can let them mix them up if you don't want to have them shuffle. And uh, so that is the Uncommon Tarot. Okay, so four card oracle for you today. This is actually the first time I've used these cards. I've had them for a few days, so I've been shuffling them and carrying them around with me and uh, reading them to myself to make sure I uh, feel like I can get a good interpretation from them. So what I'll do here is I'm going to lay down uh, four cards face down, and I'll reveal them one at a time. You'll pick one, two, three, or four as the cards for questions that you may have. I always say this is a good time to take a deep breath, let it out slow. Just center yourself. You may want to stop the video, uh, get yourself a glass of water, a cup of tea, a little coffee, whatever you prefer, something to tide you over for a few minutes. And uh, and then really just think about the questions that you have in your mind. Uh, send them out into the ether. And hopefully I'll catch them on this side, or at least the cards will. 
Okay. So here we go. Four cards, yes, no, or maybe, for your questions. One, two, three, and four. Okay. These are beautiful, beautiful cards. I'm so glad I got them. Okay, so we've got right here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. Remember, you can pause the, the video, and take a minute to decide uh, which of these cards might be good for your question or questions. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. Okay, leave these three here. Reveal the first one if you chose number one for your card for your question. Okay, so this is the tower. So the tower is a no card. And let me make a note of that so I remember what I've said. So the tower is a no card. And um, it depicted here, it doesn't look particularly uh, devastating, does it? But you can see that lightning has struck here at the top. This um, flower almost serves as the explosion out uh, for the uh, inevitable stop that this tower uh, means. So, and what that tells us is that when something has stopped, just like uh, with the butterflies right here, something else is, is going to begin. So, uh, this is a no card with a gentle spirit, actually. So, no card for number one, if that's what you chose. If you pick number two, okay, this is the alchemist. So, this is the magician. And the, the magician has everything they need within their power to make a thing happen. So this is a yes card. I'm going to make a note of that right here to the side. Yes. Okay, so this uh, alchemist is a, a very, uh, very lovely, uh, sum scrumptious uh, woman here. She's got um, lots of confidence. She's scooped up all her chemicals, all her her uh, what she needs to to make this thing happen, and she's getting ready to turn her back to us and go and make her magic happen. So this is a yes card. I would say with a little bit of mystery. So yeah. So if you chose number two, that's yes. If you chose number three. Okay, this is the Three of Coins. Three of Coins is a very interesting card, and this is a yes card. But the coins are, are uh, value. They can't actually be money. There's some purpose. And the Three of Coins is typically, for me, uh, putting something together for public display in collaboration with someone else or another plan. Okay? And so we can see here, this is beautiful. Uh, it looks like a church to be in the background. The lovely tower, clock tower. The one pinnacle featured up at the top. Someone else bringing their pinnacle in. Someone else bringing their pinnacle in. So they're all contributing to this beautiful public display. So this is a big uh, yes card. Okay. It's going to with some collaboration, it looks like, in this case. If you chose number four, then we've got the six of cups. Six of cups is a very interesting card. The cups are uh, emotions, compassion, passion. And the six of cups, let me see, who do we have here? I'm getting to adjust this to the light. It typically speaks to, of, um, Remembering that when things were better before, when things maybe were simpler or in blossom or very fruitful, something in the past. And this shows uh, a maiden, I would presume, with an umbrella, just uh, protecting herself from, can you see the, the light shining down almost like rain, almost like fog? So this person has got a lovely wrap around their shoulders, beautiful pink dress, walking up to this monument and just remembering when things were a little bit better than the cloudiness that we have now. This is a yes card with some contemplation. So now we'll put these back over. This is the signifier card for number one, if that's what you chose. This is a tower card. This is an end. This is a dis some destruction. This is a, a messy uh, situation. But in this deck, it's depicted in a gentler way. So that's nice. We'll shuffle these up a bit to see what I can tell you further about this number one, this no card, this tower card. What is the challenge for this tower card? Okay, another shuffle. Spread these out. We'll need five, so that's one, two, three, four, and five, okay? I'm going to leave, the, leave these right here to work on that energy. And with these five cards, what's the challenge to this kind of a soft crumbling, okay, this, this, this no card? The challenge to that is the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups is a, a partnerships, okay? Uh, sometimes lovers, 
This could be brothers and sisters, not as lovers, of course, as friends, working together to put something uh, thoughtfully together. And uh, so the Two of Cups in this beautiful card also features a great big line of strength at the bottom. So you've got rebirth, you've got strength, you've got cooperation, you've got compassion, you've got emotion. So this uh, tower card is, in fact, not only a challenge, but kind of buffeted uh, by this uh, Two of Cups, these uh, cooperative cooperation, this loving, considerate, strong, thoughtful rebirth consideration. Whenever something uh, is coming apart, that's, there's something new going to start after that. The base of this reading then is the Seven of Cups. You know, Seven of Cups is illusion and delusion. You know, lots of choices, things that this person is looking up to to decide how they're going to move forward with this issue. Will they use one of these strengths, two of these strengths, several of them? Uh, so that's the base of this of, of this reading. Before we come into this stop in rebirth, where there were lots lots of choices for how this can occur. In the past of this reading, we've got this awakening. So this temperance, this is like a judgment, okay, in the typical right away deck. So this awakening, someone has, look at this, they've actually had a, a nice contemplation. Someone has, has felt the inspiration of what's going to happen. They may have felt a little bit of loss before that. But this awakening, this judgment is a kind of how we come into this. So it looks like there was some sort of an issue that required some consideration, some opening up. And then it led to, like so many times, you know, a, an end, a stop, a rebirth with lots of choices to come into it. In the sky of this reading, we have the Queen of Coins. This is a beautiful Queen of Coins. Look at this. So she's got this lovely big uh, coin of value right up here uh, behind her on this great tapestry. Uh, she's very comfortable uh, in her position as the Queen. She's actually uh, adjusting her crown and uh, a lovely little uh, rabbit right here in the foreground. And um, so she's, this Queen is just very, very uh, sensually comfortable in her power, okay, in her value. And that's what we want to aim for. Whenever something has, we have a tendency when something has stopped or something has crumbled a little bit, then we try to pile in on that sorrow. But no, we need to know that, listen, I've got this. So we'll clean it up, we'll straighten this out, and we'll move forward with some rebirth, with some intuition. Um, the likely outcome of this whole thing is with the Seven of Wands. You know, the Seven of Wands is uh, one wand up here defending against some other issues. Wands are actions, plans, motions, fire. We can see this feline right here is really getting ready to consider uh, which of these issues are, are the most uh, threatening and then pounce on it. So we've got this, this wise wand up in the sky here that's just guiding us and... Um, so the likely outcome is that even though we've had something that's caused us some turmoil, we can choose what of the issues, the plans, the, the uh, occurrences uh, we're going to deal with and take them down one at a time. Okay? So just to go over it again, we have the tower card, and so that's an end. That's a stop. Uh, we was challenged by this Two of Cups, which is a companionship to uh, come forth with something new with strength. Uh, in the basis of this reading with this uh, Seven of Cups, we have lots of choices, sometimes called illusion and delusion. And you see this person is just considering uh, what they will use for this future issue. In the past of this uh, reading, we had the, the Awakening card, which is like judgment. Okay, So it, it was inevitable that some sort of a decision was going to be made about this. But with the Queen in the sky here, this Queen of Value, you've got all the value that you need to pull yourself through this. Just relax, get yourself adjusted to the situation just like this Queen is, and know that there's a rebirth coming forward. And then for the likely outcome, with the Seven of Wands, you just have to choose which of these issues you're going to deal with first and then pick them off one at a time and everything will be fine for you. So that's what I got if you chose number one, that no card, that tower card. Okay, so we'll put these back into the pack and then move on to the number two card if that's what you chose. Okay, number two, this alchemist, this magician. Okay, so that's a yes card, telling you that there's lots of ways you can mix this together. Lots of options uh, that you uh, have at your disposal, just like this alchemist. They're wise, they've tested these recipes before, maybe they're going to come up with something new based on what they know. Okay, so this alchemist is a wizened um, uh, yes card with some, um, you know, wanting to learn a little bit more, wanting to you know, dig a little deeper than perhaps they have in the past. We need five cards to finish that off, so it's one, two, three, four, and five. 
Okay, so we'll put these over here to work on those two cards and then see what we come up with with a little more divination for this number two card, this magician, the alchemist, really having everything they need to magically make this thing happen. Okay, so the challenge of that is this knight of swords. And look at this knight, really ready uh, to uh, tackle this issue, flying in on this dove with that truth, justice, rules, law uh, in her fist, or maybe it's a him, and ready to move forward uh, with this decision. So the knight is the member of the royal family who's going to get something done. He's the policeman of the thing. He's the enabler. He's the fighter. He's the army. Okay, He's going to take this issue, this truth, this justice, these rules, this law, and, and do his best to bring it to, have to pass. So for the alchemist, that's just a little reinsure, more assurance that this uh, potion that they come up with is, is going to move forward. In the base of this reading, then, we have the hanged man, and this is what we call the hanged one. And I'll turn it over just so you can see the picture of the person. So this person uh, right here has the head bowed a little bit. That's an eye right there. This is a cap on top. This is their uh, clothing that they have on top. The arms are bent up. Uh, towards the top here, the legs right down here, a little waist sash, but this is the hanged man. So this is someone who's kind of been put in a position of having to reconsider, having to look at this thing from a way that they would never have done before, okay? Forced to take another view on an issue. That's the basis of this whole thing. Um, and of course, if you're an alchemist, that's what you're doing. You're trying to remix those chemicals to see what could happen if we do it this way. In the past of this reading, with this Three of Swords, you know, Three of Swords is heartbreak. And it's just perfectly depicted here. You've got the heart up in the sky. You've got these Three of Swords really piercing this person, this very ambivalent person's uh, chest. And uh, so this was painful. So we come into this with some loss. In the sky of this reading, we have the death card. The death card is seldom death, but it is an end. But wherever there's an end, just by just like depicted by this moth and these butterflies, there's a rebirth, okay? So it's a definite stop. This is going to not go further, but something new is going to come forth from that. And that's what's so beautiful about having this uh, alchemist as the yes card, because it gives us reassurance that this will move forward. And then the final outcome for this well, this Ten of Wands is a reminder to us. Wands are actions, motions, power, plans. And the Ten of Wands is a big load to carry. A lot of issues to consider. And this person right here, wrapped up in their robe, hands crossed, uh, uh, layered across their chest, is just carefully considering how to move forward through these plans. Okay? So... Again, it's really the same message. The alchemist, the magician is saying, listen, I've got lots of stuff at my disposal to make this thing happen. The knight is saying, yes, we've been given this uh, uh, remit, and we're going to make sure that we push through and come to the best results possible. It started out with the hangman looking at this thing from another point of view. And in the past, we came to this from some sort of a, a hurt uh, a, a feeling. Uh, it could be a deep hurt. And the sky of this with death, we just know that this is a definite end to what's happening here, and a rebirth is going to take place right after that. And just know that with this Ten of Wands, these actions, these plans, as a likely outcome, is to really consider carefully how you move forward with this. Okay? Anyone who's making a new potion, they want to give it a test. They want to try it out before they run full-fledged uh, into, uh, into the fray with it. So, nice, nice uh, reading. A yes card if you chose number two. Incorporate these back into the pack. And we'll go on to number three, if that's the one that you chose. Number three card. And the signifier then is this three of coins. So putting something together for public display. And the, these uh, folks here have got their value displayed right up on their head. Someone has already placed something at the top, and they're coming to add to the mix to make it even better than it was. And uh, so this is a nice, nice yes card. Okay. Let's spread these out. Get five cards out of here to finish this off. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. These cards really work well. So with these five cards, we're going to use this to come up with a challenge to this three of coins, something valuable, something really of worth. I want everyone to see how, how well this, this works out is what this card's saying. So the challenge to this 
is the wise one. So this is the hierophant. This is the person who is, is guiding everyone's uh, direction. They're coming to this place, to this person, for divine uh, uh, interpretation. Okay, And you have people who have arrived here ahead of time. They've rested themselves on the monument. Someone here has centered themselves in the knowledge of this. And these folks are coming up with an offering and just you know, in awe of the beauty. And look at the water just flowing over the passion, the compassion. So this is the Hierophant. So this tells us that we. this is a yes card, something for public display. And there's, there's a definite way that this has to uh, play out. And that can be a challenge when you want to get something done. You don't always want to take the time to follow the rules, to follow the path. But uh, you're certainly always better off if you do. The um, basis of this reading then, with this Ten of Wands, I love it when the cards repeat. You'll hear me say it all the time. It just makes me know that they're in the game with us. Ten of Wands, uh, and again, this person has a nice robe. Their hands are folded over their chest, uh, kind of looking uh, at us, it seems like. And a Ten of Wands is just a big load to move forward, to get through. Lots of issues, plans, rules, uh, fire, movement. So the basis of this was a hard uh, journey, almost. The past of this reading, with this uh, pre Deaths. This is the um, second uh, person that the fool meets on the journey. You know, the fool is number zero. The magician is number one. Well, that was the other uh, card right here. And then the uh, priestess is number two. So she comes to us with all the knowledge that is possible to have. She is all knowing. She's even looking to for uh, divine inspiration and uh, really comes to us really confident and pious in their uh, uh moving forward with an issue. So hopefully uh, you can take some of that and come into this issue with some real deep thought. In the sky of this reading, we have the Wheel of Fortune. I love this beautiful Wheel of Fortune. You've got an owl up here, uh, which just tells us that we have all the knowledge that we need to move this thing forward. Uh, we've got a, uh, it looks like an ox down here. And the Wheel of Fortune is always turning. Usually, I like to say, it's always moving in a positive direction. Doesn't mean to say there aren't times when you might slide off that wheel or slip down a little bit and have to get a better grip. But uh, look at this beautiful cow just really staring us right in the face. So th really... The Wheel of Fortune is that this inevitably was going to be moving in this direction. Uh, grasp onto that, okay? Embrace that. The uh, likely outcome of this whole thing, then, is this page of coins. Beautiful page in this deck. You know, the page is the very least um, uh, important or strong of the court cards. But she comes to us with this nice offer of value. Could be money, but usually it's maybe some kind of knowledge, which I tend to think uh, with this card, with her holding that value up next to her head. But, uh, yes, yeah, some sort of knowledge. A little uh, not sure if this is useful, but ready to offer it up. So know that when the page brings something to the court, now the court has the opportunity to decide how to use that value. So, yeah, consider the value of what's happening here. And just to go over it again, so we start into this with a three of coins, something for public display, something everybody's going to see, and certainly you want people to be proud of that. It's challenged by the rules, the governing uh, system, which has to accompany this. It could have been, with this Ten of Wands, a hard, this is the hierophant, it could have been a hard, hard uh, push uh, forward through all those plans or those actions. But with this priestess, really divine knowledge, if you dig within yourself, you'll know that you have that too. The Wheel of Fortune tells us this it's a good turn of the wheel. We're moving this uh, question ahead. And with this uh, page of coins, may be telling us that actually this could be the beginning. This could be the kernel of a value that can become something more useful even. So that's a nice yes card. Okay. The last card, if that's the one you chose, the number four, is going to be up in just a second. I want to incorporate these right back into the pack. And so if you chose the Six of Cups, this is remembering the way things were. A better time. Sometime when it wasn't quite so wet and drizzly or shout, rainy. This person has shielded themselves with an umbrella, looking towards that monument, really thinking about how things were. They were fruitful, they were blossoming, compassion, emotion, that's what cups are. So let's get this shuffled up just a little. The cards really are nice to work with. They don't fan out as nicely as I would like them to, but I just have to work with them, I suppose. Uh, we need five cards to finish this off. That's two, that's three, that's four, that's five. Okay, these cards have done all they can. And we'll see what the challenge can be. Remember, these cards don't, uh, aren't in this uh, reading. For the Six of Cups, remembering the way things were. So, this is in fact uh, the Magician. 
So the magician, uh, much like the alchemist, he's got all the tools required. He's got the, the cups, he's got the sword, he's got the pinnacles, and he's got the wands at his disposal to make things happen, almost like magic. So the challenge to remembering things uh, the way they were is uh, wanting to get things done almost at any cost. The basis of this reading then with this Nine of Wands, is really feeling embattled. But for, and remember, Wands are uh, actions forward, plans, motion, fire. But someone embattled here, this fella is really looking strong. Okay, He's ready to take on another hit. So we come into this uh, really uh, fortified. In the past of this reading, with this Five of Swords, you know, the five, I love, the, you know, swords again are truth, justice, rules, law. And uh, the five of swords is kind of a conflict, a, a pointless uh, arguing, uh, uh, unproductive uh, embattlement almost. So we come into this with some uncertainty that needs to be laid aside and, and maybe bring our heads out of the clouds. Uh, in the sky of this reading is a seven of coins. And this is, you know, coins are value, uh, sometimes money, but worth. And this seven of coins just tells us, you know, considering have we done enough? Is there something more that we could have done? Or is this exactly where we need to be in this issue? But really taking all of that into consideration. The likely outcome of this for you with this moon card is secrets being revealed, okay? Uh, the answers are going to come out. That doesn't mean they're always the answers that we want, but they're the answers that we need to know. And this bright, big, uh, confident moon is just waiting for those, those answers to slowly make their way into the night. So, yeah. So we come to this uh, kind of remembering how things were. The magician tells us, yeah, we've got everything we need right here to get this done. And we might feel embattled, but you're good for another go. This endless uh, bickering or pointless confusion, let's toss that aside. And let's uh, understand that it looks like we've done what we need to do. Maybe we could do a little bit more, but we, we could feel satisfied that we've made this very productive. And what's gonna, what needs to be known will be known. Just trust in that. Open your heart to that uh, message. So that's what we have today for the four card oracle. And I hope that was useful for you. So one, two, three, four. I hope something uh, worked out for you. If it didn't, uh, just let it rest. Uh, maybe think about it tomorrow or maybe it just wasn't for you today. In any event, thank you very much uh, for watching and I hope you got a little bit of enjoyment out of the cards anyway. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.